Hello, everybody. Wine Saves Lives. Stephen Marisu here. So just kind of typical Monday. Not really typical. One of those fun Mondays that we get a chance to move uh, one of our projects forward. So what, we're, what we've got here is a dosage trial. So we're making uh, sparkling wine from Pinot Noir. This is 2019 vintage, so it's a wine that's been on Tarash for quite a while. It started out with five different clones of Pinot Noir from the Deer Park Vineyard in Coralitos, so Santa Cruz Mountains Appalachian. Amazing vineyard, uh, overseen by an amazing person, Prudy Fox. Uh, we selected five different clones of Pinot and we made a rosé from these five grapes, five lots of Pinot that came in uh, in 2019. And we actually fermented the wine in barrel. So we wouldn't normally do this if we were doing a, a, a Cabernet Franc, for instance, um, or, or any of our other whites, Albarino, Sauvignon Blanc, what have you. But we decided to do it because, um, I decided to do it, I guess, because I, I wanted to try to get a little bit of richness built in from a fer from the fermentation standpoint. It was all neutral barrel. So we knew we weren't gonna get any wood component from a flavor standpoint but I was hoping for some textural contribution from the wood while the wine was fermenting. And I think we got that. We've had some ups and downs with this wine over the course of its uh, fermentation and aging process. Uh, uh, and what we do here in Livermore is we make the base wine, make the still wine, and then we bring it down in stainless steel tank to a friend of ours called Barry Jackson of Equinox Cellars, who bottles the wine for us in champagne does a secondary fermentation, bottles in a champagne glass, adds the yeast, adds a little bit of sugar, so we get that secondary fermentation which creates the bubbles in the wine down in Santa Cruz. And uh, Barry did a dosage trial for us, and dosage is, is, is usually a mixture of wine and sugar. And uh, what we're trying to create is a style for the wine. We're trying to create a mouthfeel, we're trying to create a, a um, a balance between richness and acidity. This wine is beautifully acid. And if you've listened to anything that I've ever talked about as far as acid goes uh, on Wine Saves Lives, you know that I'm an acid whore. So high acid is one of our hallmarks of our style of winemaking. These wines are showing beautiful acidity. The, what the dose does, it gives us a residual sugar percentage that's very, very small. So we start at zero, which is the base wine. Uh, and then we then we'll add 0.2% RS, 0.4, and 0.6. And what typically happens here is that we'll, we'll do blends of those so we get three, three and a half, five, those kinds of things. So we get a really uh, fairly large range of, of textural uh, contribution from that little bit of sugar that's in the wine solution that gets added to the bottle. And what will happen is that after the wine is disgorged, so the, the wines are sitting uh, in, in uh, storage containers now with yeast still in the bottle and a bottle cap on top of the bottle. And uh, the old fashioned kind of romantic way of hand riddling these bottles and slowly moving from sort of perpendicular up to almost, almost vertical up and down uh, doesn't really happen by hand anymore. It happens with gyro pallets, machines that take a lot less time to do it than if you were doing it by hand. And so we'll disgorge the lot of wine and then we'll add the dosage after disgorgement and wine to get to 750 milliliters of final, final volume, which is what you'd expect in a 750 milliliter bottle. Uh, then we'll put the cork in and the cage on and the labels and all that kind of stuff. So this is the time that we get an opportunity to dial in a style, dial in a mouth, uh, mouth feel and a flavor, not a flavor, a, a texture that we want with this wine. Uh, and it, it's a really fun process because these wines change really dramatically between no dose at all and 0.6% RS. Still within that kind of style, it's called brut, which means dry. Love Clicquot, wines such as uh, as those stylistically are 0.7 ish or so in rs typically we've done very very low rs uh in fact we've done some sparkling barbera recently under the stephen kemp label that's 0.175 percent residual sugar which is very very dry we like that style we think it's a better food style 
uh, and, and, but we're also trying to make sure that there's a balance between acid and richness. And so we're going through this process. We think we have an answer. We're playing around the margins now and uh, we'll bring in Aiden for kind of a final evaluation here in the next day or two and, and we'll know hopefully where we stand with the 2019 sparkling wine of Pinot Noir. Thanks for joining me. Hope you uh, enjoyed this little bit on, on sparkling wine production. And if you have any questions, you can always get me at steven at winesaveslives.com. Really appreciate you reading. Thanks very much. Cheers.